So right here what I have is one of these Apple time capsule units. What they do is they store your files so they're back up. So if your hard drive, hard drive on your computer fails, well, you have something to back it up with. They're basically, they have an LED on the front and just a couple of ports on the back. And these also have Wi-Fi in them. I already pulled off this Apple thingy, which is kind of a pain because you have to use a heat gun to pull it off. And what you get on the bottom is you get this metal graded item. And I don't know why they put holes in it, but that's the that's what they chose to do. So you open this up, I already removed all the screws, and there's a fan right here, which is blowing straight onto the hard drive, which I can see the point why they did that. And what I suspected the problem was, because when you I plugged this in, just about nothing happened. This is what's inside. So I suspected the hard drive was failure. Uh, the power supply had failed on me. So I pulled off all this packaging. And it's pretty basic little power supply. And I have all the specs on this little sticker that went on the top. Because this is fully enclosed in plastic and I pulled it out. The only problem is, is it's 5.1 volts at 3 amps and 12 volts at 1.2 amps. It's, that's a pretty high rating, especially for something this small. So, I've kind of went past the fact that I'm not going to get another power supply to actually fit inside here. And this power supply is held in by two connectors. One is a serial ATA connector but it doesn't have the 3.3 volt connection and then the second is a um, a 6 pin just plug in that goes into the board, main board and you can see it's a pretty standard PSU I can't see anything major that went I could definitely see that one of these capacitors might have failed on me I could see these getting really hot inside this little cramped space, but really, I don't know. So here's the thing, fixing it. So your first option is, oh, I want to get a power supply into this little space here. Remember, you don't have this space here, because the fan is here. No, you can't get anything this small, unless you order it from the company, and I don't think I'm going to do that. So your next option is, is to run a couple wires from here and here, or the original ones, out through here and have a tabletop power supply. They sell these for standard hard drive mounts and stuff that don't have all this Wi-Fi in it. So, it just sits out stairs and provides 5 volts and 12 volts. I found out you can't really get those very easily. They aren't that common. And they're quite expensive too to get the amount of amps that I actually need. Another thing that I looked at that helped decide the amperage is realizing the power supply is rated for 1.2 amps on the 12 volt rail, but on the hard drive, looking at this, how the wiring works, these are the three connectors that get soldered in. Now if you trace this all out, you can realize that three of these pins are ground, three of these are plus five on the motherboard connector, and one of this is plus 12, and two are ground and one is plus five on this SATA connector. So this pin right here is plus twelve and this pin right here is ground and this pin is plus five. So basically what you'd have to do is desolder these connectors and now you have these two connectors free. Solder on your connectors and run the wire outside to your tabletop one which you can't get easily. So now you have two more options. You have these open frame power supplies. I don't have one right here. Which have this graded mesh. Somehow, my dad doesn't like the idea of having graded mesh power supplies in the closet. So, now you've gone into the option of having two just standard tabletop power supplies. Which I don't think it's that good, but yeah, well, he wants this done. So, I'm going with it. So you get two power supplies. For the ratings, I'm looking at this one, it's rated for 5.1 volts. Now, seeing, I don't know exactly why Apple seems to choose 5.1 volts, they do it on multiple occasions. The hard drive right here 
is rated for 5 volts at 680 milliamps and 12 volts at 850. Since this is the only 12 volt user, I only need 850 milliamps on the 12 volt rail and I think that 650 is a little low, but I'm not going to assume anything like that. So, I'm still going with the 3 amps and seeing where the power goes onto the board. You can see there's definitely a little buck converter right in here, which drives the internal circuitry. I'll try to take out this motherboard, just, just look to see what they put inside here later. But it looks like you're getting 850 milliamps on the 12 volt line and 3 amps on the 5 volt line. Which you can easily get those two power supplies, they're about 20 bucks each. So, really I want to go solder these power supplies in. So what I've done is I've... Uh, yeah, I didn't show and videotape the soldering, but I soldered all the connections into it and plugged in these two external power supplies. I was going to use one of these units, but it was more expensive and it was on back order and I couldn't get it for like many months. And it was just a huge mess. So I decided to go with two power supplies. Both of these are meanwhile ones, just saying 5 volts, 4 amps, and a 12 volt, 1.25 amp power supply. And here's the old sticker that came on the old power supply, and it's 5.1 volts at 3 amps, and 12 volts at 1 amp, 1.2 amps. Now, one thing I'm just going to say is it's weighted for 5.1, but I did go for a 5 volt instead, which I think is okay because of two reasons. A, if you look on the circuit board where the power comes in, you can see a small buck converter, which lowers the voltage, and the how dry is rated for 5 volts, so that wasn't an issue. The 12 volt supply is only used for the hard drive, and the hard drive is rated for 840 milliamps, so I don't even need that 1.2 amps this old power supply gives me. So, I could have gone for a lower power, but... For the price and stuff, sometimes it's not perfectly linear So with the amount of wattage. So I could get a higher power power supply for cheaper, basically. And inside it, I have this huge bare spot right now, which doesn't matter at all. I don't think it'll do anything. It shouldn't affect cooling. It'll actually make it run cooler, and it should make the hard drive actually last longer, and everything in here last longer because it's moving a huge source of heat out of it. And um, it's pretty snug, and it should fit pretty well with the fan. The only fit problem I have is with this fan right here, which goes in, it plugs into this little slot, it's a PWM fan, and it blows straight onto the hard drive. My only complaint, I'd say, is look, it has really small ventilation holes, and these holes, I don't know why I put them in, because it all gets covered up. Let's see, does she fit? Yep, it fits pretty nicely. Okay, that's not the problem. I mean, it fits nice. And on the back, it, yeah, it does look a little weird. I might put some hot glue. USB port, all the other internet ports, and the lock. It's all in there, and it fits nicely. And... Here's another thing as part of this thing. You do have to remember to add some of this electrical tape stuff and to check it for any exposed wiring before plugging it in. Because if it has it, you really are stuck with some issues. And you really don't want that. Anyways, otherwise in design, this is a pretty nice unit. It let me do this modification really easy. Because what I was worried about is it had some power supply monitoring system. So it sends out this signal a couple of milliseconds later once it's stabilized at the voltage. Because sometimes power supplies do overshoot. So when you turn them on, they jump to like 5.5 volts and then go down to 5. Before they um, are fully stable. And sometimes they kind of shake because the regulation isn't perfectly running. 
So once it's perfectly running, the power supply sends a signal in a in a, into the power supply into the main unit to tell it it can turn on all of its circuitry. Another thing I might have, I thought it might have, is a um, a item that can turn on the veil separately, so it can have a item, so it can turn on the power supply separately. I don't think it's a big thing, but it might have had a standby power and be really complex so it can sleep when you aren't using it at night and stuff like that. But it didn't. It was just a plain power supply and I'm gonna plug okay, it. So what I've done now is I have I've connected it to a power switch with strip with a convenient little switch so I can turn the whole thing on at once. And just to test it, I have this fan, which I'm pretty sure is essential because it has a PWM out, so it knows if it's running, and if it isn't, it'll shut stuff off. And I'm going to plug in the fan. Doesn't matter, really. The, I don't really care about this thing because I'm not going to run it for very long, the temperature sensor. And then I'm going to flip the switch and see if it runs. And this light's turning on. I don't know if you can hear it, but the fan's running. Okay? The switch is yellow because it's supposed to be an airport and it has no internet connected into it. And the hard drive sometimes takes a couple seconds before it spins up. Let's see how long it'll take. There it goes. Spinning up. Wow, it actually turns off the fan. That's I actually didn't know that. Could actually be a temperature based fan. Right now it looks like it's just waiting for signal, so it's in perfect condition. It just knows it has nothing to do because there's no connections. Looks like I can go test it and I have a perfectly working time capsule. Saved from the stores, which charge you like 200 bucks for them. And if the Apple store says what they're going to do is they're just going to go and just swap the insides and keep your case. Which, really? You can't just change the house plot. It only took me like 30 minutes to put in two new units. And these are $40 of wall boards. But these are pretty high quality ones. So, well, that wraps this up. Guess I fixed it and I'm glad I got a new working one and saved it from having to buy a new one.